everybody, this is Mr. Matthew here for our From Molecules to Organisms video number one. And in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how DNA is involved with transcription and translation. And we're also going to link that to proteins and some of the key functions of proteins, including enzymes. All right, so here we go. So one of the big things to know is that DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid is a double-stranded molecule and that is made of base pairs of nucleotides. And so over here in this diagram, what we can see is that there are four nucleotides, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. And these are the four nucleotides that are associated with DNA. Each one of these nucleotides has a complementary pair. So as you can see here, these green adenines are always paired up with these purple thymines. And these blue guanines are always connected to these, oh, we'll call them red-ish uh, cytosines. And that in the middle here, when I've got another a purple here, it's only going to be able to pair to a green. And when I have this red here, it's only going to be able to connect to this blue. And that's the idea of nucleotide base pairings, that A's always pair with T's and C's always pair with G's. Now, when we talk about the structure of a nucleotide, all nucleotides have the same structure where they have a phosphate, a sugar, and a nitrogenous base. In this case, the nitrogenous base is adenine, and the sugar in this case is deoxyribose. Therefore, the backbone of DNA, or the two outer portions of our ladder, are going to go phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, and that's referred to as a phosphate deoxyribose backbone or a phosphate sugar backbone. So that's our basic structure when we talk about DNA. Some other things to know about DNA, DNA is always found inside the nucleus of eukaryotic cells. Uh, and then if we were talking about bacteria, there is no nucleus, so it would just be found inside the cell. So when we want to get the information out of DNA, what we'll see is that DNA is like a reference book. So let's say you wanted the information from the reference book in the library. You can't take the book out of the library and take it someplace else, you need to make a copy of that in order to have that information. And in this case, the nucleus is our library in our analogy, and DNA is like our reference material. So what happens is the complementary copy of DNA is made by a molecule known as RNA or messenger RNA. And so what we do is we make a transcript of the DNA where we make a parallel code from our DNA. And so we use the base pairing rules just like we saw previously. So where we had a cytosine on DNA, we're going to bring in a guanine that is going to be complementary that is made of RNA or ribonucleic acid that is going to pair. And these rules are going to be pretty simple and we're going to make a single stranded RNA transcript based off of the complementary base pairing, just like we saw with DNA. Now, there is one little thing to know that RNA does not actually have thymines. So where you have an adenine, like right here, that's on DNA, you'll bring in a U or a uracil. If we go into some examples of base pairing, I will show this in a lot more detail in class. So one of the things to know is that the role of RNA is to make this copy and then take this out to where proteins are made. So hopefully you have an idea of where in the cell proteins are made. Let me give you a moment. Why don't you pause and think, where are proteins going to be made? All right, so hopefully you said, oh, I know the structure inside a cell where proteins are made are known as ribosomes. And hopefully you thought that, and that's where we're going to go next. So if I look over here on my diagram on the left here, I see that um, if I want to make copies of DNA, I'm going to make DNA copies of DNA. That's known as replication. But if I want to take DNA and I want to go through and make a protein, I'm going to go through the first step of what's known as transcription, which I've shown in this big diagram in the middle. And then I'm going to go through tra translation, and that's going to take place again at the ribosome, and that's where I'm going to make my proteins. So as the DNA uh, is turned into RNA, that RNA is then going to leave the nucleus to go out into the cytoplasm and will find a ribosome. The ribosome is right here in this diagram. And then at the ribosome, we will have these molecules called tRNAs that will bring in the amino acids that build up a protein. And we will read the mRNA code and bring in the right amino acid to match that up. So transcription takes place in the nucleus and then translation, the actual making of the protein, takes place in the ribosomes. The role of DNA 
in transcription is to provide that original transcript. The role in translation is nothing. DNA is not involved in translation. Translation is only going to involve RNA forms. That will involve mRNA, it'll involve tRNA, and then actually it involves a third type because ribosomes are made up of ribosomal RNA that will make that up. All right, so again, when we connect the structure of DNA to the structure of a protein, it's important to know that DNA provides the template or the instructions for how to construct the protein. It is the sequence of bases that are in DNA that actually allows the ribosome to know what order to put the amino acids in, in order to know what will make the right protein. So when I put the right series of amino acids together, when those amino acids fold up, they're going to form the structure of a protein. So the DNA provides the instructions for how to put them together and make the correct protein. Now, why are we talking about proteins? Why are proteins so important? Well, it's because proteins do so much stuff inside our cells. Proteins speed up chemical reactions in the form of enzymes. So up here, you can see an example of an enzyme and a substrate. In this particular case, the enzyme is going to be breaking the substrate down. You can see that without an enzyme, it takes a lot more energy, that's what this dashed line here is, in order to break this substrate down into this product. But if you bring in an enzyme, you lower the amount of activation energy needed, you lower the amount of energy that the cell needs to expend in order to convert the substrate into a product, and therefore most of the reactions that take place in the body, I'd go so far as to say really all of the chemical reactions that take place in your body are done using enzymes. Also, enzymes provide cell structures. So here down in this lower right, I have got a cell membrane. And what you can see is that within the cell membrane, I've got these proteins that stick into the membrane. Some of them provide channel proteins. Some of them are going to peripheral proteins. They're going to sort of help signal what type of um, cells we have. I'll also see that there are proteins in other manners throughout the body, your muscles are made up of proteins. The proteins of uh, actin and myosin are made up. So you, you really will see cell structures and then larger body structures are made up of proteins. They're also going to be involved with sending and receiving signals. So over here on the lower left, what I can see here is I've got one of these membrane proteins right here, and there's a little space where uh, what's called a ligand or a signal can bind to that. And then that signal will cause something to change inside the body. This is actually how your body knows that certain things are going on, is you will send signals that will be received only by very specific cells. So for example, when your blood sugar gets really, really low, your body actually will send signals which will tell your body to start breaking up glucose that you've stored up inside your muscle cells and release those in the bloodstream to bring your blood glucose level up. Similarly, when you take in a meal that's high in carbohydrates, you'll send signals out and those signals tell your body, hey, absorb these glucose molecules and let's lower blood sugar. All of this communication that takes place within your body is involving cell signaling, both the sending and receiving. A lot of times the signal that is sent is a protein and almost always the signal receptor is a protein. All right, so let's dive into enzymes a little bit more. And as I mentioned before, enzymes lower activation energy, meaning they allow your cells to do the chemical reactions that could normally take place. They just happen a lot faster and with a lot less energy taking place. So if you do not need to expend as much energy, you can get those reactions done a lot easier. If you think about like climbing a hill, if someone could magically lower a hill to a much lower level, you could get over that hill a lot faster because it's a much lower threshold to get over. Similarly, you would have to expend, uh, spend a lot less energy in order to get over that hill. So that's our energy component. The other thing is that they help break things apart and they put things together. So when we talk about digestion and you break down foods, you consume foods. They're made up of these large macromolecules. How do you get them down to the subunits? How do you get a carbohydrate down to sugar? How do you get a protein down to amino acids? Enzymes will help break those down. Similarly, let's say you want to build new cells. Let's say you want to build a structure. How do you do that? Well, enzymes can put those things together as well. So enzymes are vitally important proteins in your body, and really they regulate all of the biochemical activities that take place in your body, are driven and are facilitated by the presence of enzymes. 
All right, so hopefully at this point you have a good model of how transcription and transla uh, translation involve DNA and RNA to make proteins. You should also know how proteins carry out essential functions. You should know that proteins that regulate and carry out essential functions include enzymes. They also involve structural proteins. They're going to provide structure, enable movement, like I mentioned with the muscles. They're also going to have hormones and receptors that send and receive signals. You should also know that the model should show double-stranded structure of DNA um, and that the segments of the DNA that code for specific proteins are known as genes. And you should also know that complementary bases are also involved in these cases. Now, what you don't need to know is you don't need to know the specific names of any of the proteins or steps in trans transcription and translation, and you're not expected to use those on any state exams. Also, aside from the nucleus, the nuclear membrane, and ribosome, you're not going to really need to know any of the other cell structures that are involved in this component of talking about protein synthesis. All right, I hope that was helpful, and I'll talk to everybody soon.